Hey there, Psych2Goers, and welcome back to our channel. We wanted to let you know that your ongoing support helps us make psychology and mental health more accessible to everyone. So thank you all so much for the love that you've given us. Before we begin, we wanted to remind you that this video is meant for informative purposes only and is not meant to be a diagnostic tool for mental illness. Please reach out to a mental health professional or your doctor if you think you might be struggling with anxiety. With that said, let's begin. Anxiety seems to be so mainstream these days and people are feeling more stressed out than ever. But there's a difference between experiencing anxiety and having an anxiety disorder. Feelings of nervousness or restlessness will go away, but people with anxiety disorders get no such break from their symptoms. This can change the way you communicate, behave, and even think. In today's video, we will be talking about eight struggles people with anxiety can relate to. Number one, you fret and worry over small decision choices. Do you freeze with indecision when thinking about what you want for lunch? It usually shouldn't matter that much, but when your brain is moving at a mile a minute, it's not hard to invent a hypothetical situation where this choice could mean life or death. There are so many what ifs to consider and the anxious brain wants to examine them all. It's important to remember why your mind stays stuck on something. It's trying to protect you. The what ifs are all meant to prepare your brain to deal with real situations, should they arise. Be kind to yourself when making a decision doesn't come easily to you. It's not for nothing, even if it is disruptive or frustrating. Two, which comes first, anxiety or sleep disruption? If you find it difficult to get a good night's sleep with an anxious brain, you're not alone. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, stress and anxiety are closely related to and often coincide with sleep disorders. These can range from nightmares or restlessness to more complex conditions such as bruxism, where you grind your teeth while you sleep, or narcolepsy, which causes you to spontaneously fall asleep. It can be hard to tell whether sleep troubles or anxious thoughts are the root of the problem. Anxiety can cause a lack of sleep just as easily as a lack of sleep can make you feel anxious. Number three, the worst case scenarios always seem more likely than they are. When you've been dealing with your anxiety for a long time, your brain gets used to being on the alert for danger, even when none is present. This is why it's easy to ruminate on negative or intrusive thoughts. Jumping past the more likely outcomes to a worst case scenario becomes automatic. Everyday occurrences can send your nervous system spinning when you've become so good at searching for anything that might go wrong. We offer a challenge to any anxious Psych2Goers out there. If you notice yourself imagining a disastrous outcome or event, see if you can come up with one other scenario that may occur instead. Is one more likely than the other to take place? Number four, you have no clue if others can sense your anxiety. Do you worry about whether or not other people can tell when you're feeling anxious? And then are you doubly worried about how someone will react if they do find out you're having a panic attack? Since no people experience anxiety the same way, nor are any two situations the same, there's no real way to tell unless you tell someone that you're not feeling well. If anything, your anxiety is not as noticeable as you fear it to be. There are so many other restless, sweaty, awkward people in the world, and everyone else is probably too worried about themselves. They're less likely to notice if you look a little flushed or act a little odd. Five, you can literally worry yourself sick. Have you ever been so stressed and worried that you felt like you might throw up or pass out? When you suffer from anxiety, these severe reactions become normal which can put immense stress on your body over time. Mayo Clinic states that symptoms such as headaches, heart palpitations, and gastrointestinal issues are common expressions of anxiety. Dealing with these over a long period of time can lead to complications such as irritable bowel syndrome and other chronic disruptions in the nervous system. Six, self-doubt slows you down socially. Do you long to be out and about with your friends, but your anxiety and doubt convince you to stay home instead. Socializing can be incredibly stressful for someone with anxiety, especially if you have social anxiety disorder, which is specific to public or group settings. Between physical symptoms and a racing mind, keeping up a conversation with your friends can be tricky. 
Your brain interrupts with intrusive thoughts and questions and you wonder if you're doing it right. If you notice that you're worrying about whether your anxiety makes you come across as awkward or quiet, that's okay. It's good to be aware of your effect on others, but make sure you're trying your best to be genuine and be you. Living in today's society is a lot of pressure already, so there's no need to double down on yourself. Seven, you find it hard to, uh, huh? Stay focused. You find it hard to stay focused. When your anxiety is bad, do you struggle to concentrate? Like when you have to reread a page in a book a couple of times over before you finally comprehend what you're reading. Recent BBC research cites a 2011 study from the University of Notre Dame which confirms that the brain is designed to hold only so much information at once. If you're taking up that space with tons of what ifs and worries, there won't be much room left for anything else. Changing your thought patterns won't happen overnight, but it's certainly possible. It will likely take some trial and error to find what works for you, but practicing mindfulness, getting exercise, and avoiding multitasking are a few good places to start. And number eight, yeah, you can have anxiety about your anxiety. Have you ever heard of agoraphobia? The UK National Health Service defines agoraphobia as a fear of being in situations where escape might be difficult or that help wouldn't be available if things go wrong. Most people who suffer from this condition practice avoidance. Some might refuse to take public transportation or be in crowded or open spaces, while others may not leave their house at all. Avoidance aims to protect you from danger, panic, and even embarrassment. Did you relate to any of these scenarios? Tell us about it in the comments below. Anxiety is tough, but so are you. If you have any other tips that help you with your anxiety, share them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please like and share this video with someone who can benefit from it too. The studies and references used are listed in the description below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon for more Psych2Go videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.